Hi, in this lesson we're going to look at how to bring in video for animation reference purposes inside of Maya. And if you've tried this on your own, you've probably run up against the same issue that I did when you go to View, Image Plane, Import Movie, and you try to bring in a standard MPEG or a QuickTime Movie format. It gives you an error message that says it's unable to load the image file and a yellow box. And the reason for this is because Maya doesn't natively support uh, any real codecs that are modern today. Um, it does support AVI, but I've had mixed results with that. Uh, if you're on the Mac platform, you probably are fine, and you, because QuickTime uh, is already installed, and QuickTime works pretty well with Maya. But it's not installed on the Windows platform, and it's not installed by default on Linux either. And I think Apple has discontinued support for QuickTime, so you're kind of out of luck with that. So the best approach is to export your video as an image sequence and we'll bring in the image sequence into Maya. So let's talk about how to do that. These are the steps. Let's go into our um, After Effects video editing program and just click New Project and create a new composition. And let's give the composition a name, Demo Sequence. And I'm going to use the preset that works for me. I'm going to be animating at 24 frames per second, and the output is going to be HD 1080p. So I'm using the HD TV 1080 24 frames per second preset and 24 frames. And then we've got uh, the duration set to one minute. I'll cut that down in a second. Let's click OK. And let's go ahead and go to File, Import, File and bring in the video that I want to edit. I do want to quick retime this video footage and just take a little section of it. So I'm going to show you quickly how to do that. Just drag the video down to the timeline. It'll automatically place it into the composition window. And I only want the first part where he walks over for this particular thing. And he walks over a little bit slower than I want in my animation. So I'm going to retime the footage so that he walks a little faster. To retime footage in After Effects is really easy. There's two main ways to do it. One is to use a time stretch or use time remapping. And I like time remapping because it gives you keyframes that you can move around and change and control just certain areas of the, of the clip. So I want the uh, part where he starts to walk right here to have a keyframe at the beginning and at the end of that walk sequence. So like, let's say right there, we'll add another keyframe, click on that little diamond icon. And then I can take, if I want to shorten or make this area a little bit uh, shorter, I just need to reduce the space between those keys. So let's bring that over. Now let's play it back. So he walks back a lot faster. I only want this range to be exported out. So I'm going to uh, go to that keyframe and then shift drag over uh, that workspace line for the beginning and we'll do the workspace end as well. Hold down shift and it snaps to that keyframe. I wanna take this whole thing and uh, bring it to the beginning of my, um, of my timeline here. And I'm gonna bring this work area over as well. The reason I did that is because I want the frame count to start at zero. And by moving the clip over so it starts at zero, it will line up in Maya uh, correctly. All right, so I've got that work area set up right. I'm going to go to Composition and then uh, Trim Comp to Work Area. The next step is to export the video as an image sequence. To do that, there are two main paths. You can send it to the Adobe Media Encoder queue, which is a separate application or render it directly in After Effects. Uh, I prefer to do this old school method because it has a more robust way of naming PNG sequences. And I've also had some of my students have issues with uh, the Adobe Media Encoder in the past where they couldn't get things to work right. So I recommend that for image, ex for image sequence exporting, you should use the native render queue that's just built into After Effects. couple things that should be noted in the settings here uh, where it says best settings if you bring the sequence into Maya and it's just really slow you might want to reduce the resolution uh, you can use a custom value or one of these presets like you could half your image size really quickly uh, upon export 
and that will speed up the rendering in uh, in Maya. I'm going to leave it at full for my purposes, that's fine, and click OK. The one below that is for setting the format. So right now it's set to QuickTime. I want to use a PNG sequence. Um, I've found that some of the other formats work well too, like JPEG. Uh, I think TIFF and Targa work fine as well, but for my purposes, PNG is, is just great. It's going to work fine, and we'll click OK. And then to the right, um, we have this output. Uh, we need to tell it where we're going to output that image sequence to. So I'm going to just put this into my source images folder. Uh, and we'll create a, a new folder called PNG underscore. Let's just call it PNG uh, for simplicity. And then down here for the file name, we need to name it in a very specific way. Uh, you can only use um, alphanumeric characters, and it can't have any underscores, um, it, but you can use a dot. It actually needs the dot, followed by the number, followed by the extension. If you don't use this proper syntax, it won't play back correctly in, in, uh, or at all in Maya. All right, so let's go back to After Effects and make sure that we get rid of that underscore and replace it with a dot. And uh, the, the reason I like the native renderer in After Effects for image sequences is we have this ability to change how many uh, numbers we have in our um, suffix of our file name. So you could hit Shift 3 and add more pound signs if you have a really long sequence. I only need four uh, digits, so that should be good. But again, make sure that's only text and there's no underscore and you use a dot followed by that um, render token for the number, followed by a dot extension. It also has this checkbox automatically checked for save in a subfolder. I don't need that checked because I'm going to place this directly into this PNG folder. And let's click Save. And now we can render it out by pressing the Render button over here. Okay, that chime tells me that the render is done and I can go check my sequence and make sure it rendered out okay. I'm going to go into my Maya project directory and then go into source images. And there's the PNG folder I created and there's the sequence and it starts at zero. That's important. Now we can switch over to Maya and let's go ahead and just create a new scene. And one important thing that you should do is you should create a camera because when you create an image plane, it automatically attaches it to the active camera. So I'm going to go up to create camera and create a new camera. I want to look through the camera. You can middle mouse drag the camera into the viewport from the outliner or just go to panels, look through selected or select it from the perspective menu right here. And I also like to turn on the resolution gate and that's this button right here. And then we can go to view and image plane import image or you can click the little icon for it too, which is this one right here. And it automatically takes me into the source images folder because I set my project correctly. And so I've got my sequence here in the PNG folder and I'm just gonna double click on that first frame, the zero, zero. And if you scrub, it doesn't play the whole sequence. That's because we just need to check the box. It says use image sequence. And now we should be able to scrub it uh, and it will obviously end when the clip ends, so that's why it switches to this yellow box, because there's no data there. But you can see the sequence plays back correctly. And now we can move our camera around and, and bring in our reference footage uh, if we need to. Let's just quickly bring in Iron Rig. Let's go to File, and we'll create a reference and bring in the Iron Rig as an example. Let's zoom out. Now, uh, when I zoom out enough for my 3D model to show up in the, the render uh, region, um, it gets kind of shoved behind the video. And to fix that, select the image plane uh, in the camera and go into the attribute editor and look for image plane shape. And we can scroll down and find, I want to find the uh, depth value and change that depth value to something like 500 to just push that image plane back behind my 3D model. And now I can line up my camera with my uh, my real live plate. 
And you may find it um, best to also change your camera's focal length. Um, if you know your lens that you used and your camera and all that, you can get that data and plug it in here. I don't know what this video was shot at, um, but uh, it was probably a pretty wide angle lens. Um, but you could match that up and it would make the footage um, line up with your 3D world a little bit better too. Um, let's just try it like a 20 millimeter just to see. It looks a little bit more like more realistic, I think, when you match that stuff up. And then what I typically do is I'll lock the camera so I don't accidentally move it. And you can click on this little icon that says um, lock camera. And then you won't accidentally bump it while you're animating. And then we'll switch over to our perspective view. And you can see everything here. There's our little camera. If you want to scale up the camera icon, you can just go into the attribute editor for it. So control A and then go down to object display and you can change the locator scale to like 10 and it will just make it a little bit easier to see that camera. Um, I often will tear a copy off. So um, I have my render view on one side or on a separate monitor. Let's go to panels perspective and look through that camera and just go to panels, tear off a copy and then I would park this onto a secondary monitor and do all my animation from the perspective camera. Here's another tip. If you find this video to be in your way, you can press Alt-4 to show and hide the image planes. So that's just by going to show and you can see this image plane says Alt-4 for the shortcut. All right, you could also have the video only visible in this viewport. If you select the image plane and go into the attribute editor, you can, at the very top, tell it to only display through the looking through camera. And now it won't show up anywhere except through this viewport. So I hope that was helpful.